Well, greetings, everyone. And I have a bit of a a cold, so my voice sounds a little froggier than usual. That's why. But we're going to do um, a track. I don't think we've done this in a long time. And it's called Theta Joy. And it's just what it sounds like. It's it's joy. It's data, which is that, you know, kind of that place where the where their inner psyche and the outer meet kind of the alpha and the delta between that and uh i would just ask that we do an inquiry while we're doing this meditation and have the medicine question and you know ask what is my joy What does it take for me to experience joy at a deep level? That's a good question. And uh, if you get the answer to that, I think you have the answer to a lot of things. So um, without further ado, this track is takes us into the theta brainwave. And it is 24 minutes and 43 seconds, so it's not real long. And uh, we'll see you on the other side.
Uh, welcome back, everyone. And uh, if you hear a lot of hammering and stuff, that right under I me, mean, there's people doing reconstruction. Yeah. And uh, I was thinking about that and how. In postmodern thinking, we're, we're pretty good at deconstructing. That we take the values, and culture, and traditional values, and everything, and break it down, tear it to pieces. Where it's like it shows that this is not right or not functional. But but sometimes we, uh, I think, we forget that inherent with deconstruction is you have to do reconstruction. When you tear something down, you need to put it back together. And hopefully in a way that's that's broader, wiser, more functional, more compassionate, and um, brings in all the different knowledge and what we've learned. So remember, it's easy to, it's easy to deconstruct, but the, the, the work, the sacred work is what we need to reconstruct. So, um, we were talking about joy and uh, what, uh, where does that come from? And I can, I can just speak to myself personally that uh, joy comes when my small self connects with my greater selves uh, see the two circles and the place where they meet and that is the uh, the area that I think of as the human soul that's the deepest part of our individual self because at the same time it's connected to our our big self uh, I was reading a uh, a verse from the Gospel of Thomas. And uh, this is the verse that's it's been around, but it's just part of it. And I should have brought it. I could read through the whole thing, but the part. And in this, Jesus says, if you split a piece of wood, I am there. If you lift up a rock, I am there. So basically, he was saying, and Jesus was speaking this as the light, as God, as, as as the sacred in that. So you can find it wherever it is. And joy comes when we connect those two pieces of ourselves. And years ago, when I first started using binaural brain beats technology, I had a very, very powerful uh, spiritual or mystical experience. Yeah. First off, I little John here was like, like everything. It was everything. Uh and but but it wasn't like I got lost or anything. It's just whatever I was, I was still that, but I'm also everything. Then the insight that came with that was that the individual self, itty bitty John is also very important and sacred. And I and I, I I was kind of was laughing to myself. I said, wow, maybe these Buddhists got it all wrong. You know, that the, the individual self doesn't go away. It's like it took the universe billions of years, maybe 13.8. They're they're uh, they're playing with new numbers now because of everything we're getting back from the James Webb. So you know, that's that's one way of, of understanding that. But it took the universe a long, long time to create you. And 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 I, of course I'm not just talking about the you know the neurotic self or the false self or we have a lot of different selves, right? But those yeah, those are, you know, okay. Th those are uh, things that we create because of our experiences. And eventually we have to kind of sort through it and get all the strings from being all knotted up and let them, you know, be straight again. But the true self is a soul, your individual soul. And in that 
experience that I had, the teaching was that it's very, very important. So when we are meditating, when we are doing our integral practice, when we are working on ourselves, that is not a Donald Trump narcissistic move. That is actually being responsible for who and what you are so that you can become aware of the process of evolution and that whatever you are or I am has been there since before the universe. We think that old, you know. So, uh, I got a thumbs up here. So, so yeah, it's important to work on yourself and uh, connect that to the law, connect that to what you find when you split the wood, connect that to what you find when you lift up the rock, connect that to what you find when you go inside. And, and therein we find uh, the answers to all the biggest existential questions. Like, who am I? What am I? Why am I? What am I supposed to be doing? Or, or not doing? Uh, and those moments when uh, the big self and the small self come together. Yeah. Everything becomes translucent. You know, if you're in the woods, or you're in the desert, or in the mountains, you can be in your bedroom for that. And all of a sudden, it's just the presence is there. And not only is it real, but it's hyper real. It's more real than the kind of dream that we walk in, you know, that, that we consider to be, you know, reality. Uh, it's hyper real and uh, and from that place we gain a deep and mysterious knowing and it's not like we can intellectually explain everything uh well, I certainly wasn't given that ability. Uh, but I could understand that it was okay. And that the, the, the struggle, you know, the, the, the fight of the true warrior is self against the self. In other words, it's your, 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 your noble na nature against your ignoble nature, if you will. And you want the, you want the uh, noble nature to win, which brings me to a story I heard many years ago. And I used to share this with my students uh, in integral recovery. Mm -hmm. So there's a young man, and uh, I guess he's Native American. At least he has a Native American teacher. And he has this dream. And in this dream, there's this really savage, awful-looking junkyard dog. Mm -hmm beast who's fighting with this noble you know uh, beautiful dog and just spreading each other and he wakes up yeah he, he's just one of those dreams if you've ever had when you wake up and you're just really upset it's like wow this wasn't just processing the day's event this was a medicine thing this was something so he goes to his uh, his medicine man his, his elder he says, Grandfather had this dream. It was really disturbing. And I saw this, you know, this vicious looking dog, and it was fighting with this beautiful dog, and they were both going after each other. And then I go, wow. and I know it's important, but I don't understand what it is. And uh, Grandfather says, Well, that's your. That's your good self. 
in combat and struggle with your not good self. Yeah. But don't worry, it's going to be okay. And the young man says, how can it be okay? You know, he's really, really scary. He says, well, it's going to be okay because you're going to feed the good dog. Okay? And that's our responsibility when we're dealing with our small self, our individual soul, is to make sure that we feed it and we care for it and we we don't do anything that would dishonor ourselves or our souls. And if you do that, ultimately you're going to be doing pretty good. It doesn't mean, doesn't mean you won't go through hard times and difficult times. But the hard times and difficult times are, are the polishes of the stones or the diamond. As well. yeah. it's, it's a big, beautiful stone that the light can come from. And spread out. That's why diamonds are so valuable and magical. I mean, they're good for a few industrial purposes, but that's not what they do. It's the it's the ring. It's the, the thing that you see that you look into that light, and you can see the sacred. You know, you split it open there, you find Jesus again. So, um, yeah, you'd matter. You really, 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 really matter, and the universe seems to really, really, really care about you. Okay, so if you're if you're going through difficult times, or personally, or you're you know you're looking at the world around us and everything that's going on, how we're 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 still at a level of consciousness where we think it's you know where we kill each other and invade and we slaughter. And, uh, that's not good. That's kind of business as usual. Uh, a few hundred years ago. But now enough people have uh, uh, reached a state of consciousness where we know that's not okay. And, uh, and it doesn't mean that we don't resist. We, we have to resist. And however that takes, whether it's psychologically, spiritually, physically, militarily, we have to do our bit to, to protect the good. Yeah create a community of conscience as Martin Luther King said. He said that's when we get beyond all the black, white, male, female, gay, LGBT, all of this stuff. What we want is a one community of conscience where, where we're all one and that matters. And again, as Martin said, he said, uh, I dream of a day when my grandchildren will be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their souls. So, uh, and that's what we can work on. And that's what we can be responsible for. And again, I was talking with Marianne Williamson the other day on an interview for a Deep Transformation podcast. It's going to come out soon. And she said, she said, she said In any situation, what lacks is what you can do. In any situation that arises, what's lacks, what lacks is what you can do. So, and that's a wisdom teaching. And uh, so, again, it, it, it puts the responsibility on us in doing what we can do and then expect our higher self to do what we can't do as a small self. And then we get those two parts of ourselves working in harmony. And that's where we find true joy and peace. And uh, the answer to all the existential questions that we've been asking all our lives is there in that relationship. So I think that's probably enough. Okay. God bless you guys. Thank you for showing up and being here. And, uh, keep practicing. Keep doing what you can do to be the person that you need to be.